If you've been studying physics for some time, you will know that physicists love diagrams. That's because the real world is incredibly complicated, and diagrams help us to break it down and make things look simple. Today, I'd like to introduce you to free body diagrams, which we can use to analyze forces. A free body diagram shows all the forces that act on a single object and how they relate to each other. Here is an example of such a diagram. It looks kind of boring, but that's the point. All the details of the system have been stripped away, so we can focus on just the forces that drive its motion. This is what we're trying to represent. What my diagram shows is the forces that act on a piston inside this steam locomotive. As you can see, the real thing is way more complex than the free body diagram. That's why we use them. Here's how it works. First, choose the object you want to focus on. For this example, I'll use a tissue box. Draw the object as a small rectangle. You don't have to be super neat, just make it obvious that that's where your object is. Next, consider all the individual forces that your object experiences. I'm going to pretend my tissue box is sitting on my desk, not moving at all. What forces are acting on it? First, there's the force due to gravity, commonly called weight. Anything with mass will have a weight force in Earth's gravitational field. Weight is always drawn as an arrow pointing down, a vector. The tissue box is not falling, so there must be another force keeping it up. Indeed, the desk applies an upward force called the normal force. This is basically a reaction to the weight pushing down. Normal force always acts at right angles to the surface an object is resting on. My desk was horizontal last time I checked, so the normal force vector must point straight up. The relative sizes of these vector arrows are also important. I have drawn them with exactly the same magnitude. Is that correct? My tissue box is stationary, so all the forces on it must be balanced. We see that it experiences two forces and they act in opposite directions. They must have the same magnitude so they cancel out, leaving no net force. Therefore the box does not accelerate in any direction. There are a couple of important points to go over. Notice that I only drew the forces acting on the tissue box. I did not draw all the forces on the desk, which has its own weight and reaction forces. A free body diagram only considers the forces acting on a single object. Also, you should be aware that this is a type of vector diagram. By drawing forces as vectors, we can use these diagrams to work out things like the angles between them, or the size of the net force if there is one. So it's a handy mathematical tool with real analytical power. For instance, if I take my tissue box and let it slide down a ramp, its free body diagram looks like this. You will learn more about this kind of motion in a later module. For now, all you need to realize is that there are three forces acting on the box. It has the same downward weight force, W, but the normal force, N, is now slanted away from the vertical. Normal forces always act at right angles to the surface. There is also an added frictional force, which opposes the sliding motion, it points up the slope. In a situation like this, the forces are all at different angles, so we need to use trigonometry to find the net force. If you have played with boxes and ramps before, it should be intuitive that the net force will be directed down the slope like this. Now, we're going to look at free body diagrams in relatively simple scenarios, where the forces are always in the horizontal or, or vertical plane. Have a go at the following exercises. Hopefully you will get an appreciation for why free body diagrams are so useful to physicists. Thank you for watching.